In a world where there are significant inequalities, people living in poverty and competing demands on resources, Africans face many challenges. But we must start somewhere. Strategic interventions can make a difference. Here's Africa. Here's land. Here are crops. Want to know how a green revolution can change Africa? Here's how. Food is a vital part of human and social development. Unfortunately, 240 million Africans currently suffer from undernutrition. Despite possessing large tracts of rich uncultivated land, Africa is a net importer of food, dependent on food grown around the world. But the continent can feed itself. In the late 1970s to early 80s, for example, massive outbreaks of millibugs destroyed cassava crops across much of Central Africa. However, by 1988, the millibugs were largely under control due to a biological pest control program that saved an estimated $2.2 billion worth of cassava across the region. In 2005, Malawi's food production fell far short of domestic demand due to poor rainfall and overused soil. This left 5 million people in need of food aid. In response, the Malawian government adopted an agricultural extension program to provide improved seeds and fertilizer. In 2006, the maize harvest more than doubled, and in 2007, Malawi became a food aid donor to neighboring countries. Despite these successes, many countries are lagging behind. How would a green revolution change this? We at the African Futures Project constructed two improved agricultural scenarios for Africa out to 2050 that both increase public and private investment in land under cultivation as well as the yield per hectare. Our first scenario, the African Green Revolution, led to an increase in crops produced per hectare up nearly two tons per hectare in 2050 when compared with the base case. A massive shift in food trade with Africa exporting 20% of total food consumption to the rest of the world, leading to an economy that is $3 trillion larger by 2050 when compared to the base case. Sounds good, right? However, just changing agricultural production policy and increasing the amount of food produced leads to massive increases in exports. This surplus of food drives down prices and makes it cheaper for the rich world to buy steaks and does little to reduce extreme hunger on the African continent. To take the benefits of a green revolution and make them African, we created a second scenario, the African Green Revolution for Development. This combines the previous public and private investment in agriculture with policies to get the food produced into African stomachs. This scenario led to 4.9 tons of food produced per hectare, up from 2.9 tons in the base case, 10% of Africa's food being imported, twice the GDP growth by 2050, and 300 million less undernourished people as compared to the base case. By implementing programs that increase food production and access, policymakers can cultivate and strengthen human development across all of Africa.